I'm Polly Wilding and I'm the Academic Programme Manager at the Cooperative College and myself and Scylla were put together the information day two weeks ago to introduce people to the sort of current stage of the Cooperative University where we're thinking what we're doing um, and what our plans are which was a really successful day but obviously not everybody was able to make it and other people perhaps have only found out about it more recently so we wanted to build on the day um, and give a little bit of a sense of what the, the day um, involved and then give a more opportunity for discussion um, and chats about uh, what was covered. Okay, and just briefly for those of us who don't know me, I'm Vice Principal here at the college and it's great to see so many colleagues and, uh, and uh, friends joining us on the call. Um, so uh, I think it's probably sensible if we begin by ask each person to introduce themselves very briefly maybe just say your name and where you're from or you know what, what why you're on the call really would be good and i we did just want to check if people are okay about us recording the call it's for internal consumption only um oh right okay <laughs> we it's might need to use it more widely if anyone's got a problem could you let us know please uh, and we'll obviously stop recording uh and, and just internal ourselves okay so uh, also for those of you that have joined in the last couple of minutes if you could just keep yourself on mute while you're not talking that just helps communication because otherwise uh, there'll be a lot of interference so if i just start with the top and do you want to introduce yourself first hi thanks polly thanks Silla. it's so exciting to be here um my name is Anne winter i'm from the center for human ecology based in glasgow and I was really upset not to be at the information day, but looking forward to today's webinar. Great, thank you. Um, Kath? Hello, I'm Kath. I'm based um, here in Cardiff. I'm an educational developer and I'm very interested in this area of work. I also work with CARA, working with Syrians uh, based uh, usually in Istanbul, in Turkey, and um, they're having a discussion around how they might uh, rebuild their sector. And I think uh, co-ops are definitely one of that potential raft of opportunities. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Darren? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Darren Connolly. Um, I'm based at uh, the University of Brighton Business School. Um, I'm in the middle of doing a uh, PhD and uh, there's a cooperative angle to it and it's looking at uh, producers of online video content. So I'm going to interview people using Zoom. So I'm interested to see how this, you, how this is going to work. Great, thank you. Um, Grant? Grant, you're muted at the moment if you want to say hello. Okay, maybe we'll jump to Ida. You need to unmute yourself, Ida. Yep, hello. Um, I'm Ida Kem. I'm quite interested in interdisciplinary pedagogies. And um, so I'm quite interested to hear what the discussion's about um, in terms of what the Cooperative College is offering. So thank you. Great, thank you. And Jane? <coughs> Hi, um, I'm Jane Watts. Um, I'm based in Leicester, I'm freelance and I work in um, adult education development, lifelong learning policy, that kind of thing. But I also have a connection with the phone co-op, um, which is my main cooperative involvement at the moment. But I'm also um, very, still very slightly involved, but hoping to get more involved with Leicester Bourne College. So. Great, thank you. Um, Mike? Yes, good morning. My name is Mike Neary. I'm, I'm the chair of the, inter of the Interim Academic Board for the Co-op University. And I've been involved in, in this project for, for, for quite a long time now. I'm looking forward to hearing what you all have to say and contribute to this discussion and project. Thank you. And Tom. Hi, I'm Tom Woodin. I work at the uh, UCL Institute of Education and uh, uh, I've had a long-term interest in researching cooperative education um, 
and been involved with the Cock College over a number of years. And can I ask, when Scylla speaks, can she lean forward just slightly? When she leans back, it goes silent. I, okay. I can hear you very clearly, but sometimes when Scylla leans back, it, the, the voice goes. Okay, great, thanks. Great. Um, Darren, we've, uh, I'm just checking if we miss anyone. Grant, do you want to give it another go? No. Okay, have I missed anyone? Unfortunately, the list kept jumping around as people spoke, they moved up to the top. So hopefully I've covered everybody who's there, but do wave or speak up if you, if you haven't said hello. Okay, so we'll, we'll get started. Um, so what we want to do today is we've got some bits of video um, from the day and we're going to use those both for people who were there and people who weren't there just to sort of give a bit of an overview, a bit of a flavour of what we did on the day. So we'll play a bit of video and then start conversation um, and then go back to the video and back to the conversation. But if you want to use the chat function on the right hand side as we're watching the video, then we can use those as prompts to start discussing um, what we did, um, uh, well, what we want to discuss. Okay, so we'll play the first bit of video, um, which just gives you the sort of vision and um, overview of the day itself, what we were planning to do. Absolutely, 
Okay, so that was the start of the day, and that's when um, Scylla set out what we were trying to do, what we're trying to do um, with the day, and how we were going to go about that, and start to talk about the vision of what it was, what it is that we're talking about with um, university. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody um, who was there on the day would like to comment about any of those aims. I, I mean, I, I think you know, what we tried to do was, as, as Polly said, to get the day out, to get the, set the parameters of the day out. But, but I think we, we kept to it pretty closely then throughout the rest of the day. And you know, really got a, a, a lot of interactive activity, which helped, you know, really encourage people to test those aims, I think, and to share back their views on, on where we got to. I don't know if anybody who did attend might want to comment on that, um, on that at all. Mike, you're muted. As well as the aims, we wanted to let people know where we are in terms of setting the co-op up, uh, in terms of its structure and its framework, and the way in which it links with already existing autonomous independent co-ops around the UK. And we wanted to ask people to share in setting up, in particular, a new course that will uh, introduce students to the idea of cooperative learning and the cooperative movement. Um, so I think I think those are some key issues that the day was about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the nice things about the day was that we got some really, really I mean, apart from the fact that we got 100 people in the room, which was pretty amazing, but we also got a lot of enthusiasm off people. Um, and it was a good way to get the sound, a sort of a, a sounding board to actually sort of check back with people. So you obviously were involved in these earlier conversations, Mike and Silla, that sort of that got us to the place we are now, but to check back in with people that we're, you know, there's still the enthusiasm in wider sort of movements and, and wider groups, and that we're not just talking to ourselves. And that when we look at the feedback from the day, you know, the, the term curiosity, um, doing things differently, sort of excitement, a recurring words that people were using about what, what they experienced um, at the information day. Yeah, there was just one other thing. Um, I, I don't know if it's the right place to say it, but why not? Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, and I'm sure we can make it available as a PDF, um, is we've actually launched our first uh, uh, which which is, um, you know, it, well, I'll just, it's, we title it working together to build an extraordinary academic experience and we talk about the vision and values why we're different the programs getting started the journey so far and then students at the heart of a cooperative university we, we, we realized we wanted something tangible that you can drop on your foot just like other universities um, and this is a sort of precursor really to our next uh, piece of of output, which we hope will be our prospectus, which will be launching in the spring. But um, we'll make that available to you as a PDF, I'm sure. So perhaps this is a good time, um, unless there are any other comments from anybody at this stage? Anything anyone wanted to say? No, okay, well, we'll move on to the next bit of the video, because this is, I think, a bit more of, um, exciting bit of discussion that happened on the day, was about what's different about a cooperative university. And we had a panel discussion with a selection of people, not everybody who's involved, obviously, but talking about why they thought a cooperative university um, is something that's, that's different. So we'll play that. I'll play that next bit of video now, which is a little bit longer. What do you think is distinctive about cooperative university? Thanks, Mike. Um, 
lost there actually, but I and I am scribbling on the train this morning. Um, so this is going to be late. Um, and I designed those kind of four things for you. Um, and then they're not the only four things, but the four things that I think do matter. One is the purpose um, of the book of the world. And um, and it's a page with this project. Um, for me, that is about um, helping to create learners um, uh, active participants in society who can see things in a different way, can ask questions, can reflect, can think of new ways of organizing society that meet some of the really serious challenges for us currently facing, and not only in this country, but more widely. And um, so I think that's um, really kind of an important idea to my point of view, thinking about the alternative way of uh, organizing society, living our lives, and, um, and informed by the uh, my point of view, by positive values and principles. Um, I think the, the second thing is the learning process. Um, I think it's extremely important for Cochrane University to have a fully engaged learning process with um, participants. So, um, and that means not only thinking about um, interaction, interactive study, um, which I'm not sure all of us are uh, not about, but it's actually also about thinking about how do learners participate in building that knowledge and creating that knowledge and also bringing their own knowledge. Um, and we sometimes, I think, forget that people come to, to learning with huge life experience already and particularly as well and and bringing that um, it, 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 it into the picture is a very important part of the process. Uh, and navigation. Um, and navigation also, the third point, is governance structure. So a very different governance structure from current conventional university. Um, which I think is, is um, a pretty important dimension as well, more than a sustainable democratic government structure uh, for both learners and for, for staff as well, all staff, not just academics as well. Um, and then the fourth one is um, to produce learners who are playing a key role in producing. I can talk to you a little bit about my experience as a, as a student and how a member of that work around the top of the university in the past few years. And uh, as a confederated uh, university of three different existing uh, policies, uh, part of the engineering, business, and education. Uh, I think there are three elements in my opinion, Charlie. Oh no. Okay, hi everyone. Sorry about that. Um, we can hear it perfectly. <laughs> um, for, I, I mean, the sound quality of those videos isn't the best because of the space, um, but we can we can hear it without any problem. So we are going to put it on um, on YouTube. And make it available so you should be able to watch it that way so sorry about that but um because it did give a nice flavor of the different um people but perhaps we should just then talk about why we think um it's different and i think um in broad themes we can talk about sort of pedagogy and approaches to teaching about um structure and about um i always get two out of three well the, well the yeah, the, well, the governance is probably the critical piece yeah. because that's about the membership. But they're also oh, sort the of content. Some, yeah. yeah, the content and also the sort of financial um, differences we you know which um, do, do you know are diverse from a mainstream university. Uh, and, we, and you know we might we might want to talk a little bit about those. I mean, maybe I could start from the financial bit, which is it might be interesting for those of you who haven't been involved in in the discussions to date. Um, if, if you actually look at this leaflet, or don't know much about, about us, um, we've, we've had a, a, lo a, long, a long period to get to this, uh, to get to trying to do the difference and to be different. 
and that included a number of round tables where we asked people around the three key themes that um, Mike and, and Joss Wynne had helped to identify some time ago in their own writings, which was where a cooperative university might be different. And I, I, if, I, if I'm absolutely honest, I think one of the first things we thought about when we think how would we be different in the light of escalating student debt and, and vice chancellor's pay and so on was, well, we, we wouldn't charge as much. You know, that'd be the first, the first really key difference. And we would, you know, what we would try and encourage in our federated model and a return to that around governance in a second was to actually make it much more affordable as, as a whole uh, higher education experience. And it's important to stay here that some of the other decisions we've reached are that this is actually a part-time offer because of course these days you you can you can take a degree in a part-time degree in four years and it's open and we can return to that but it's also about re reaching not a traditional sort of 18 year old undergraduate so we recognize we, we uh, because we're going doing it properly and going through the office for students and so on that we would expect that some of our students will want to uh, access the student funding arrangements whereas others might fund themselves differently but what we concluded after having a, a, a lot of conversation was that we would we would probably be charging what we felt was a more reasonable amount. So it comes out at round about um, five and a half, it's five and a half thousand pound a year um, over four years. So that takes us into twenty two thousand rather than the what the twenty seven thousand of a traditional mainstream degree. But provided that people study uh, that that level and that amount, then they will they'll have a, a divvy a dividend coming back to them of broadly five hundred pound. Uh, a year, which knocks it down to 2,000. We we're very keen that the divvy was there as you would expect in a cooperative university because it's about membership and engagement. Um, so within that, we also wanted to secure, why we wanted to charge those sorts of fees was that, you know, we wanted to make sure it's a, a decent work uh, environment and that, you know, where approach for, for, for those who teach and learn within it. Uh, and, and to ensure, frankly, that it's a really high quality environment as well. Uh, that means that although it's a blended offer, and others will say more about that, you know, there'll be space for residential and face-to-face, -face, and we've built some of that in. There'll be space for community events and so on, but also in terms of the resources that will be available to the cooperative university. We're not going to have to skimp on those. And it was, it, it was a very hard balancing act because as you know, frankly, as someone like myself who comes from an adult ed background where you're always trying to reach into communities where there's not a great deal of money, then you know, how do you make, how do you reconcile that? And uh, it, it was quite challenging. But we also were persuaded by Andrew McGettigan's work on how those repayments are made and how the poorer student tends to not repay uh, in, the, in the same pace and, and, and time as you know a better off student who's able to secure a, a, a better finance job so you know the, the, the fees and funding side of things it's it's the sort of in a sense the most boring uh, you know and it's not the exciting thing but we still wanted to make it make sure it was a cooperative experience uh, in terms of you know how uh, but also realistic you know it, it, you know, we've all, I'm sure many people on this call, you know, have worked in sort of and been involved in alternative higher education and other educational initiatives. This is actually going through the Office for Students, it's going through Quality Assurance, it's going to be a university. Uh, and, and, you know, we have to make sure that the, the fees, and, you know, that the whole thing uh, washes its face. So um, it, if that sounds a bit like we're sort of on the defensive, it's, I suppose it is in a way, because ideally we'd have charged everyone 100 quid. But, you know, we, we just had to be sensible. We've done some very sensible figures. Bearing in mind, and I'll pass over to Polly and then perhaps someone else might like to say something. It is a federated model. And that, that means that the federated higher education cooperatives who are, who are affiliated to the cooperative college, and it's the college that's going for degree awarding powers in the first instance, with the anticipation and hope that it will become a cooperative university three years down the line. But it, in, in the meantime, will play that role with its affiliated partners and within the federation. Um, it's, it's, you know, there is the always, because the, the higher education cooperatives are autonomous, it's up to local cooperatives to set uh, the, the fees as they think fit. 
Now, you know, we might reference the fact we that he chairs our interim academic board, and on that, and might want to say a bit. Mike might want to say a bit more about that. These are some of the discussions and you know possible tensions that we need to to work out within our on, with our, on our academic board because you know if one of our partners is only charging a thousand pound or something, what does that mean in terms of quality? I mean, I'm, I'm simplifying things, but you can. You can understand how we've got this. There's a lot of sensitivities uh, around this. So I don't, that might help just to say a little bit about the financial stuff. And then Polly, you might want to say something about the yeah. other. Well, I was going to talk about teaching, but I think actually picking up on that, obviously the, the structure and governance, there's the federated aspect of it, and then there's the student involvement um, in the university and the sort of the ownership of the university and what I, ownership over their own learning. Um, I actually thought maybe Michael or Anne would actually like to talk a little bit about that um, governance aspect. Mike, you're nodding. Is that, you're happy to talk about that? You're on mute at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm certainly happy to talk about that. I just wondered after what Silla has said, is there anything anybody want to ask about that? And I, I did just post up as well. If anyone wants it, when we're speaking, then just also use the chat box. So we can either come back to you or, or what you say. So that's another way of doing it. But if anyone wants to yeah, add anything at this point, then just unmute yourself. Hi, is, is it, this is Ida. Is it okay if I go ahead? Please, yeah. Um, so I've been, I do some work with the Open University. Um, and I'm, I'm just wondering how your offer might be different than the open universities offer. Okay. I think the key, perhaps the key issue about the Corp University is the issue of governance. And in that sense, students and academics and administrators and other stakeholders will have an equal say in how the Corp is run when, it's, when it is fully constituted. And that model of governance reflect itself, it re reflects itself in the curriculum and the way in which the courses are taught. That is to say, they're taught with an emphasis on collectivity and cooperation. And I think that's, that that's really the key issue. So the courses are designed so students are encouraged and supported to feel the power of working as a collective group. And that's a very, and that's sort of very uh, antithetical to the neoliberal university, where the whole process is very much individualised on individual students uh, as consumers uh, and as their own um, individual transformation. I think the co-op has a wider political project at its heart, uh, and I think that's that's really key to the co-op university to the co-op university as I say, reflected in the model of governance and in the way in which that then runs through the curriculum. And at the moment, we're in the process of designing a course that will be taken probably by all of the students at all of the autonomous corps, although that hasn't been fully decided yet. But, but I think that is the key issue, cooperation, collectivity, working together, that's, that's, I think, what is key about the Corp University, in my view. Yeah. And if I could just build on that, Mike, I think, you know, there is a common question because I think that's where people's minds jump to, is thinking, ah, so you're going to be similar to, um, to the Open University. And to some extent, we, we are. And in fact, we've got a professor from the Open University on the academic board. Um, you know, so obviously, there's a sharing of ideas there and there's sort of support from the OU for what we're doing. Um, but I think the, the different ways in which we are um, different um, from the OU. So obviously the one that Mike was most talking about there was about the ownership, student ownership. And that feeds into, I don't think he again implied that in, in, into the content of what they'll be teaching in that we're not planning to set absolutely everything um, saying this is what a module looks like, it's fixed, it's got, I mean, I'm doing at the moment our module form and what we're trying to get there is, is the balance there between um, creativity and flexibility and student engagement 
and the commitment to standards and the commitment to quality and the commitment to university level education. Um, so those two things very much feed into one another, the ownership over the actual university, but the ownership over their teaching. And also I think that, you know, knowing people I've never taught or, taught or, or studied myself through the OU, but knowing people who do, I think our level of interaction, even though we're also doing blended, um, is, is going to be much higher. We're going to make much more use of interactive online tools and starting, I mean, I know the OU does also face-to-face -face stuff, um, although I, I believe that's less than it used to do, the sort of residentials that we're going to be starting with, a big residential, we're going to be working really, really hard to get a sense of community amongst cohorts um, and then ultimately as we have more and more cohorts between those groups as well. Um, but that we want to have as much interaction as we can possibly make the technical tools um, provide us with, if you like. Do you want to add anything to that? We've got another question there from Jeffrey um, about why not free? Well, good question. Yes, go on. I mean, uh, yeah, a good point, Jeffrey. And, and when we had our, um, our round table around finance and funding, I'd say probably about a quarter of people in the room were asking exactly that question. Uh, and of course, we've got um, colleagues uh, who we would call, you know, cooperative or alternative educators who work around some of our participatory work, who, like the Free University of Brighton, for example, who've taken that route and decided to do that. Um, our view was a different one. Um, and, and I know Mike would, might want to say something about this. I, I, I would always say, well, it's about people's livelihoods as well. I want it to be sustainable. Um, I don't, I, I am a trade unionist. <laughs> I also don't feel uh, that it's always appropriate to ask people to give their own labor um, voluntarily. I think we're looking at making this whole thing sustainable. And rather interestingly, Jeffrey, out of uh, some of the work that was done some of the interviewing that was done uh, with uh, Leicester Vaughan College students, a number of the students would have been very unhappy if it was voluntary uh, you know, uh, or free as well. It, it, it just did, it just, I mean, in, in, I mean, I'm involved in the Free University of Slough, and that's free, but you know, the, the, to actually make a sustainable university that challenges the mainstream neoliberal model is what we want to do, Jeffrey, and that's, that's why we've taken this route. Uh, my, yes, my, if I could say student fees is, a, as, as we know, a highly politicised issue and the students were at the heart of making it so to their credit in 2010 and the whole fee issue is currently under review and it's likely that the fees will be uh, reduced if the Labour government was to come in, maybe their current policy I think is that it will be free and speaking for myself I would very much support that. Um, but we are working with colleagues in Scotland and students attending the Centre for, um, the Centre for Human Ecology, um, I think, when it's organised and set up, actually, the programmes will be free. So, um, so, so uh, it's, a, it's a moving issue. We're very aware of the politics of it. I myself was involved in the Social Science Centre in Lincoln which was a free co-op for eight years. So I know what it's like to be working in that kind of environment. And as important as it is for students who are unwilling or unable to take on the burden of debt, I think it's also very important that academics or people teaching earn a, a, a living wage for decent work. And that, that's a key, a key point. So we're trying to survive in the mainstream system while at the same time radicalizing it. Um, Anne, did you want to add anything on that? No, I, I um, Mike summarised very neatly in his last sentence exactly what I was going to say is that we are, there is this tension between um, wanting something to be free and it isn't. And, I, and it is very important that what we're doing with our project leads the way in terms of working within the system to actually change it. Okay. Got another question here about the drop we're assuming. Um, this is from Tom. So at the institute, I'm not sure which institute that was, you probably I mentioned. Ah, oh, okay. Education. Yes. Uh, encouraged to take more full-time students, partly because part-timers face a lot of other issues in their lives. 
So this is something we've obviously been discussing and obviously I'm sure lots of people have got views and thoughts on, um, on this. Um, I don't know if we want to, where we want to start actually, to be honest with that, that because obviously we're doing full time, we're doing part time, but we're doing it over four years. So I think that does make some difference in that it actually, it requires a commitment to actually sign up for something like that. But four years to me, at least, is actually, um, it, it, it's, it's got a, you know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, I think. So, do you know what I mean? There's, there's, it's not when, when part-time degrees always had to be six years and sometimes were longer than that. Uh, a, a commitment over a, lot, a longer period. But we do want to be flexible, obviously, that when things occur, when things come up for um, learners, that we're not saying, well, if you can't finish within this year, then, you know, uh, you can't continue. Yeah, I mean, I'd just like to add to that. I think it's a question, Tom. And, you know, those of us who work in adult ed know that's always an issue. And that's why there tends to be very strong pastoral, or historically, there has been strong pastoral support uh, for, for non-traditional students. I don't want to be sort of uh, gung-ho, um, but uh, uh, or unrealistic. But of course, one of the things that we are really hoping is that because of the model of the cooperative university, um, that we're going, to, we're going to be able to appeal to a new type of membership. In other words, people will have a type of investment in that university. And we have, although we wouldn't say we're, you know, we're, we're, we, we sit along, you know, we, we've been influenced and supported by some of the thinking in Mondragon although we recognise that's quite culturally distinct in many ways. Which is a cooperative university in Spain, yeah. in the Basque Country. For those of you who don't know. But the different ways that they encourage students as members and as, you know, as equals within that university, uh, right from, you know, helping to uh, make their livelihoods in some, some parts and pieces of work, right through to their absolute engagement and participation, the whole experience. You know, I mean, I'm not suggesting that problem's going to go away, Tom, because it isn't. Uh, but, you know, we, 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 we're hoping that we're putting some things in place which will actually encourage people to... Because to, retention's a massive issue for anyone, whether they be full-time or, full or part-time, and especially, as we know, in so-called non-traditional students. So, you know, we're hoping that the model, and there is some evidence that the model is such, the cooperative model, we know how resilient it was after the 2008 clash. And we hope that that model and the sort of uh, democratic uh, practices within it should encourage uh, ongoing participation. Plus, there is gonna be strong pastoral support as well, right, yeah. because don't forget it's a values driven, um, you know, university. I mean, that's exactly what we want it to be. So it is about, you know, caring for the community and, and you know, without being soppy, it, it really is about that type of solidarity uh, rather than individualism. So, you know, there will, there'll just, be people who drop out. And, and we have, obviously, we've got figures in our OFS submission that presume a particular percentage, but I don't want to quote the wrong one now um, because I haven't got it to hand. But I, I think in, in terms of that support, our sort of potentially a weakness in some areas, but also a strength is starting so small. So we won't have large um, student support services. We won't have disab large disability services because we don't have that sort of mass in order to cater for that. And we won't have the finances for that. But on the flip side, that means that we will be providing really individual and targeted support for those that need it. So it'll be really tailored. Um, so hopefully that will go some way um, you know, to, to help people work around those issues and those things that arise. Um, so I've just seen there was a question about commercial partners co-funding the university and Mike, you've put there's no commercial partners, but we do want to work with the cooperative um, societies and cooperative movements. So not to directly fund the university, but hopefully to provide students with places. Um, do you want to add to that before no, we go to another I think, comment? I think that's it. I, th I think, I think um, 
you know, I mean, there are, there are um, financial tensions. We've been very fortunate. The, you know, we, we have a, a very supportive within the Cooperative College, which is, those of you who don't know, it is an independent cha uh, charitable incorporated organisation. You know, it did come out of the Co-op movement 100 years ago, but it is independent. Uh, and we have a very strong and supportive board of trustees who have, you know, um, been able to make some investment in our startup. Um, but we, th that's not going to be enough. You know, we are going to have to to draw upon, um, you know, other people. And, and, and instinctively, of course, it would be the cooperative movement. But I think it's also important to say that although it's called a cooperative university, uh, we're not looking at working with what we might deem to be the traditional cooperative sector. I mean, they'll be part of it, and that's great. Uh, but as you all know, in the UK, that tends to be the sort of retail and consumer sector. What we've got increasingly, as we know, in, in response to, you know, the changing nature of work and so on, are really interesting emerging cooperative sectors, or even sectors, you know, and groupings that don't necessarily align themselves with what you call a traditional co-op movement. Our view is that this is a way of doing a university and a livelihood and a social making of knowledge differently. It's, yeah, we know about the cooperative movement and that's part of it, but you don't have to be in the cooperative movement to engage with this university. And that's not where we're targeting. I mean, it was interesting. We've just had somebody in, great uh, colleague in for three days, helping to do some research around, you know, who can we, who can we approach now in the sort of adult, what's left of it, adult learning, adult education sector, whether that be local authorities, various learning centres and so on. Um, and, and, you know, and, and then independent centres like Swarthmore Education Centre in Leeds. So there's lots of people out there um, who we wouldn't, who wouldn't identify as part of Cooperative University. It's what we are and how we're doing it really as much as anything else, I think. Peer assisted learning and the sort of relationships between students and, and the relationship between students and their, their tutors. I mean, it's, it's absolutely important. Important. And this is, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's tricky. It's another tension, Jeffrey, to be honest, because as someone who, you know, I'm a great believer in face to face working um, and, 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 and I, that I kept come through that as an adult, as an adult student. But I think there's lots of different ways and others know better than me how we can use technology in really creative and exciting ways as well. So the idea of having, for example, um, Internet um, and, and Zoom, you know, uh, study and support circles is absolutely spot on. I've done a lot of work with the Workers' Education Association voluntarily. We do something called Cork and Talk, which is a sort of seven o'clock session in an evening where everybody sits with a glass of wine. And you know, there's about 25 people on it from all over the country. And we go into the, you know, I mean, you know, we go into the various discussion rooms. We and, and whoever's sort of facilitating it will move between. So I see absolutely how, what a rich, incredibly rich possibilities uh, there are there. And, you know, mentoring, you know, somebody, somebody talked about, um, although, you know, we're, we're looking at the sort of financial support we can get, but it's not just finance, is it? It's about engaging people in terms of, you know, mentoring and supporting, uh, thinking going back again to that issue around retention, you know, and, and keeping people involved. It's very much a collaborative experience for a whole range of stakeholders that aren't just the students or the teachers, in my view, you know, and we need to think about how we can do that mutual support. Yeah, and I think I add from that as well. Oh, sorry, is someone speaking? Yes, Darren, can you hear me? Uh, Hi, yeah. Darren. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, can I just, uh, um, only because uh, Darren said I'm actually going to go and do some teaching. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to, uh, if I may ask a question, one of the things that I've posted uh, um, a message is the USP other than cooperative values. And I know uh, one of our colleagues has mentioned about the OU and differentiation, but um, I, I guess what I'm getting at is the, is there a, a, a really a social enterprise driven angle or some kind of Dyson element or something that kind of other than, because cooperative values is, is a really key thing. Uh, uh, technology is a really key thing. But I, I'm thinking more from the student perspective about that thing that um, I, haven't, I haven't seen perspectives. Uh, this is the first time I've come in contact with the 
project. So uh, forgive me if this has already been covered in some way, but um, from a student perspective, if there's a, 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 a dare I say it, that kind of a social enterprise, dice and whatever it is, I can't think of a better phrase off, off hand, but something else that says, that's why I want to go there. It's and as well as the cooperative values, as well as the principles and, and uh, um, bit the governance and being engaged uh, financially. I think the thing that I would respond here, and I'm sure Scylla will want to pick up on this, is, and it was also actually um, in response to Jeffrey's um, question, I was thinking about this in terms of how we set the standard for mutual support, but I'll, I'll leave that to one side and that may maybe remain implicit. But the first module that we want to um, do, and I think Mike also mentioned it at the beginning, is what we're calling the getting started module at the moment and is tentatively titled cooperative learning research and practice and the idea with that module is it's it's all i hate to use the word it's a skills module because people have lots of ideas and connotations about what that is and, and often not of them very helpful um but it's about setting um the scene for subsequent learning and it's about how to be a cooperative learner so about embedding those values and those skills and how to engage with your own learning, doing all those things. And now obviously it will involve content. It's not going to be just all abstract, but applying that. So it's not, you know, I, I'm familiar with these sort of small study skills modules that students do in their level one that, uh, you know, uh, extra, extra numeri, numeri, is that the word? Um, you know, that don't count and people don't value them. Um, and they might think, well, they get a few tips on how to do research on the internet, but that's beyond that. Um, it's not very useful. Whereas we're actually sort of putting it up front as a really big, meaty, chunky module where they actually learn in an excited way, hopefully. And I think, you know, people who we've talked about um, this with and people we've actually started engaging with on developing this module, and that was in the information day as well, that people we did an interactive session where people engaged with this module, um, that people are very excited about that as an idea of a way to get people ready for learning and potentially to become a cooperator in the traditional sense, but also to become a cooperator in their studies and in wider life and about that sort of mutual and collaborative learning. Now, I think that that sets things up in a very different way from a standard university and for those that that appeals to, I think that will be very, very exciting. Um, for those that don't, then possibly it's not the right <laughs> type of university for them. But Phila, do you want to say more because you've been developing the... Well, I would just add to that. I mean, the thing that I find really exciting, I'll, I'll use co-ops rather than social enterprises, not because, because I'm being purist at all, uh, but I actually like co-ops because it's a different ownership model and that, that's what I do like, uh, to be honest. But I think, you know, going right back without being over historical about it, the idea of, you know, learning how to do cooperation, how to be a cooperator is very much about learning those skills, about how to run an enterprise, because a cooperative is an enterprise. First and foremost, that's what it is. And we believe that simply by participating in the whole university experience, think of the skills, Darren, that are gonna be acquired right from, you know, what, what are rather, I think rather unfortunately called soft skills, which of course are really the hard ones. You know. So how do you resolve conflict within a team? How do you, you know, make things happen in a particular way? How do you make decisions? All the, how do you negotiate? All those skills which are loosely under an employability sort of frame now, are implicit in the whole experience of being in a cooperative university. But more than that, I'm a work sociologist and my particular history is looking at a, few, a different type of future of work. So when we have an unknowable future of work, how do we actually think about the skills that people are gonna need uh, you know, within, their, within that, that uh, university experience? So it's, none of that is far away at all. And I think if anything, you know, I mean, there's lots of really great mainstream universities, both, you know, Polly and I, both of our backgrounds are in those. Um, they would also, they have values. There are public service values and university values, and that is right and proper. But I think, that, you know, the big USP for me is the type of learning and the skills, what, what was called throughout the 19th century, associative intelligence. What you learn 
by being and learning with others. And, you know, I don't think you can particularly put a value on that, but I think it is something that's extraordinary, not unique at all, because, you know, that's an overused word, but it's certainly implicit in the whole four year experience of being in a cognitive university. Which I totally hold people good, I think, outside of that. And I noticed Sam Winter's written a comment up there as well. Um, that, that's really neat. Yeah, it encompasses critical pedagogy and the education is for the development of the whole person. And that is, that's really what we're about here. You know, and that is hard. I always say that. You know, it'd be much easier to go and do a three years in business studies. With them. You know, th th this is hard, isn't it? It's not, it's, it's going to be hard to do. Uh, and we can only sort of strive to get it right, but we do feel that these are some of the good things that a cooperative university can offer. Okay. Any, I'm just aware of time, and I don't want to run over because I know people have got other things going on. Um, but are there any other questions? Would people like to ask anything specific? Oh, Mike's back. After causing mayhem. <laughs> um, because obviously, I mean, I don't know whether it's worth sort of summing up that difference again, because I think, you know, just sort of those headline things of, you know, it's about what we teach, it's about that critical worldview and, and you know, uh, how we reflect on what we do in, in a wider sense. It's our approach to te teaching and embedding a student's um, centeredness in that. It's about the funding and it's very much about the governance, so the students being members of the cooperative university. Now, obviously, I think it might be worth mentioning at this point, the fact that we are not currently a university, that we are acting as if we are a cooperative university with that, you know, as the end point, but we will be right from the beginning having students engaged in a more meaningful way than just sitting on board. So they will actually, you know, we will have a, all of our um, sort of students will be um, there and we'll have a voice and then all students will have a, um, a vote so one member one vote at the AGM as well so I think you mentioned that before I know Mike's um, desperate to speak well so. uh, thank you and I see that Tom has asked the question really that I wanted to say something about and that is the relationship between teaching and research and, and I think for me um, what distinguishes us from the to use that term again the neoliberal university is that we don't begin from the perspective of the student if that is what neoliberal universities are about. And I think what, what's really key for us, what is at the heart of the cooperative university is actually the production of critical, useful, practical knowledge. So this is a research project as much as it's a teaching project. And I think we would agree that teaching and research cannot really be separated and shouldn't be separated as that is the essence of what a university is. So I think um, that, that to return to Darren's question would, would be our unique selling point, that it's a research project, not just a teaching project. The research is the creation of critical, practical, useful knowledge. And that this, I think, was at the core of the traditional cooperative movement that began in the 19th century uh, it was to uh, to create a new form of knowledge for the benefit of people and the planet and I think that social enterprises and Dyson are not about that They're, they aren't as critical as the traditional labor movement is uh, and I think it's important that we uh, we make that clear from the outset and I'll add just a very brief footnote to that is that this first module that we were talking about just before is learning research and practice and we very much see as part of what we're expecting students to do from the beginning it's not something you do at the end of your degree once you've learned the skills that it's actually part of what we do and that both teachers and learners are involved in that process from the very beginning um, I've just noticed we've got another question from Jeffrey about how to get involved and whether the curriculum can develop from um, the bottom up. So you're nodding, Scylla. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, very much so. I mean, as you would expect, we've got to, we, you know, what we've done is putting together a programme um, is that we 
go in with a number of an architecture, if you like, of, of we, we have three uh, programs, one P G cert, one you know, one postgraduate program, and our what we're calling our big that's the casual word, the big chunky module. Um, now we, we've we, these have been put together absolutely in consultation with our federated partners. 